what is up guys i do hope you're well and welcome to a very uh tipsy cringe daddy as we go into malicious compliance if you are new here please consider hitting the like that subscribe button and maybe just maybe even that notification bell and let's get started less ice if you say so i'm a barista at a small coffee shop and we do blended drinks Basically, just pick a drink off the menu and add the word frozen to it. And we'll pour over ice and then blend. And it takes a decent amount of ice since you're going for the blended, slushy texture. It doesn't affect the taste unless you let the drink melt and I get it all watered down. I get to work and this woman is already at the register while my co-worker tells her it'll be a minute because she's in the middle of a drink. I walk behind the counter to go to the office to drop off my stuff and clock on. And this woman sees me and immediately starts saying, Hey, hey, can I order? I say, it'll be a minute, as I'm carrying my bag and my coat, obviously not in a position to be making drinks. My co-worker tells her again that she'll be with her in a second, as soon as she's finished with a drink she's making first. I drop off my stuff and venture out to the tills to clock on, and the woman starts talking to me and rattling off questions when I haven't even clocked in yet, and was clocking in early just so that she wouldn't have to wait for my co-worker to finish up. The conversation goes as follows. Do you have any blended drinks? Oh yeah, it's... You know, blended? Like with ice, blended together? Yes, as I was saying, we do. It's our frozen drinks on the... Blended drinks? They're called fraps. Ever heard of them? Is what I imagined she was saying in her head. Me tired of her cutting me off every time. I tried to explain and finally able to get her to stop talking. Yes! Yes, we do. Our frozen drinks. How are those made? Which was a dumbass question since she was over explaining the blended drink to me and cutting me off when I tried to point out the options on the menu. Just like a normal base drink, then we fill it with ice and blend it. Large blended latte, light ice. I don't take the light ice comment seriously, since any blended drink relies on a cup full of ice to give it the blended texture. I just figure I'll level the ice in the cup rather than heap a mound over the top. She pays and steps back and I pour the ice into the cup all the way to the brim which is less than we normally do for a blended drink. The customer practically hops over the counter and screams, excuse me, I said light ice. I turned to her with a look on my face and explained this is less ice. Because normally for blended drinks, we use way more. And if I use less ice than what I had, the drink would be just an ice latte with ice dust in it. Her not even listening or comprehending what I said. Less ice. I smile, say, okay and pour out most of the ice until it only fills a third of the cup. Let me reiterate again, we normally use a cup and a half of ice for blended drinks to give it that blended texture, which is the entire point of ordering a blended drink. I was using less than a third of ice I was supposed to put in for a normal serving. I fill a cup with milk and espresso shots and pour the mixture into a blender. I watch as the blender just chops up a total of five ice cubes until it's just ice dust, which melts right into the espresso and out of the blender comes a very frothy, no ice to be seen, cold but not that cold latte. I pour the less ice drink into the plastic cup and slide it out onto the bar. Frozen latte with light ice. I call out and watch the woman look up from her phone to see a cold, iceless latte on the counter with me smiling at her. She looks like she's confused at the drink's texture and almost as she's going to say something until I say, I hope there wasn't too much ice in there. I took out most of it like you asked. She takes the drink and leaves. Enjoy your very frothy, watery, not that cold because there wasn't enough ice latte. <laughs> I could just, I, I could actually just picture the grin on that person's face as they were sliding that drink across the counter. <laughs> I charge you too much. My friend, you have no idea. I used to be a bartender slash manager at a small family owner restaurant. We had this one customer who I'll call D, is short for douchebag. Anyways, he used to be a really nice guy, always fun to talk to, had interesting stories, the works. However, after about 8 months of him being a regular, he asked me out. I, very politely and kindly, turned him down. And my god, you'd have thought I threatened his mum with the way he reacted. So following that point, he turned into a giant douchebag, always snapping at me, both literally and figuratively. Complained about food he never had an issue with before, etc. A couple of months later, we had some changes to our menu and had some slight price changes. Notably, his favourite soup, elk chilli, was 75 cents more. 
He stormed in and sat and ordered out chili. I said, of course. I just want to make sure you're aware of the change. He snapped at me and said, how dumb do you think I am? I can read. Okay, my dude, whatever you can say. So he gets his soup, his meal, a few beers and a glass of one of our higher quality bourbons. I bring him the check and he flips out. This is more than it was before. You never told me it would be more. This is fraud. I'm not paying this. Fix it. Okay, I can do that. However, on the check, I'd also only charge him for happy hour price beers, which was significantly less than our regular prices. Happy hour ended before he even got there. I also charged him for a lower quality bourbon by the same company. Please note, the owner was okay with that since he was technically regular, but I spent a lot of money there. So I fixed the check for him, but I fixed all of it. The new check was about $15 more than it was before. He was so mad he was lost for words, and I took that time to show him how I fixed the check. He never came back on nights I was working after that. I don't work there anymore. I wonder how he's doing. <laughs> so if I'm right, it went from 75 cents more to like $15 more because it was happy hour before. But my God, that's, that's some revenge right there. But he kind of deserved it because obviously he was only going in there. It seemed like he was only going in there to try and maybe hit on this girl. If, I, if I'm right in thinking. Yeah, what a douchebag. <laughs> Want what you paid for, you get what you paid for. Here's a tale of corporate revenge. I was just a witness to this, but I hope you'll get a kick out of this as much as I did. A couple of years ago, our company signed on a new corporate client, Blue Corp. Blue Corp wanted a monthly report about their industry with several custom features. We agreed on a price based on other similar projects we had done in the past. Our final price for Blue Corp was Blue Corp reports, 20 pages, $10,000 a month. Red Corp reports, as above, free of charge. Red Corp was another company recently bought by Blue Corp. There was a bit of work involved in adapting the reports for them, some extra research and changing text and graphs in the report. But since it was a big contract, my boss decided that it would be more attractive to offer it for free. The overall price was very low because it was a big client and we're hoping to get more work from them. Sure enough, Blue Corp liked our prices and we started working on their reports. Fast forward several months and Blue Corp had become a nightmare. They're our worst client, they kept demanding changes and wanting additions to their reports. Nothing is ever good enough for them. The report had ballooned to over 60 pages now, with a lot of extra content that we hadn't budgeted for, and that Blue Corp isn't paying for. My boss doesn't like this. We're losing money from this project because we have to spend so many days every month working on Blue Corp's report. But she doesn't want to fire them because they're our biggest client. A small consolation is that, although Blue Corp keeps requesting more from us, they forgot about Red Corp reports. It appears that Red Corp is using the Blue Corp reports internally, since the contents are 99% the same, so we decide that until Blue Corp asks, we will not waste our time providing them with the Red Corp reports. Unfortunately, at some point, one of the Blue Corp a-holes comes back to ask for the Red Corp reports, but not only that, Blue Corp has bought yet another company, White Corp, so they want a report for White Corp too, free of charge, as per your price quote. My boss thinks about it for a while, it was an emo exchange and then replies, our original quote said free of charge for a 20 page report for one brand, Red Corp. Since the report has now grown to over 60 pages and there's two brands, Red Corp and White Corp, we have to charge you an extra $500 a month to cover the cost of the two additional reports. Keep in mind this was a really low price given the additional work that would have to go into the extra reports and it's chump change for a big corp that was spending 10K a month on this service. Blue Corp, however, does not like this one bit, and one of their managers calls my boss to complain. You just have to slap a different logo on the front. You're trying to screw us over. Check our written agreement again. It's free of charge to do one, so it should be free of charge to do two. At this point, my boss is livid, so she decides that we're going to do exactly as they ask. We're almost finished with the June 2018 report. Boss takes the report, goes through the original price quote, and removes all the extra sections that were given to Blue Corp for free. She whittled down the report from 60 pages to the original 20, then slapped the Red Corp and White Corp logos on it, made two different versions and emailed the files to Blue Corp. Unfortunately, I wasn't a witness to the chaos that ensued. The Blue Corp people went ballistic, calling my boss and threatened to cancel our contract. We had other projects for you, but you're being so unprofessional. Give us the report now. We're in the middle of a very important meeting with the important people that we need the data, etc, etc. My boss said, yeah, you see, you told us that Red Corp and White Corp reports had to be free as per our price quote, so we went back and reread the quote. 
It turns out that we were providing much additional content that wasn't originally in the price quote. This month we have delivered exactly what we agreed and you paid for, including the R&W reports free of charge. If you want to make additions to the report, we can discuss it and agree on a price. The blue court guy says, You're out of your mind. You haven't heard the last of this. A few days later, my boss gets a call from the blue court bigwig. He wants to apologize for the misunderstanding with his underling and politely asks for the extra content that they need. They negotiate a suitable, very substantial price increase for all the additions they want. We deliver them the 60 pages report they want and we have dealt with a different manager since then. Happy end. Kinda. Because we're still working with them, but they're still our worst client and a monthly pain in the ass. My boss still wishes she could fire them, but they're our biggest client. But she said something that is very true. We thought we would entice them with freebies to show them our reports were valuable, so they'd give us more money. Instead, they saw that we were giving them away for free and decided that they were not worth paying for. It's not worth to give things for free to some people. Isn't that the truth? Absolutely, oh my word. <laughs> It sounds like a bit of a minefield dealing with those com like company like that. It seems like the bigger companies are always the worst ones because they get some sort of um, what's I can't even think of the word. I've had too many beers to, <laughs> to even consider it. But they like they get some sort of complex where they think they're above everyone else and so they can talk down to everyone. So they should get stuff for free, which really doesn't make sense. And they make a lot more money than smaller companies. But yeah, you know. Marge Simpson hair complies with all boys middle school uniform code. Hi, this story is from a quarter century ago, but still hilarious. Background, my Catholic middle school in Mexico City reflected the demographics of Mexico City. 1200 boys, 10% white, 20% native, 70% mestizo, mestizo? I hope I got that right. And me being the single black bean in the cafe au lait rice. <laughs> The school had a peculiar uniform code, where we attended in formal uniform Mondays and special events, and in civvies Tuesday through Friday, except for having weekly PE on a civvies day, and having to be wearing sportswear, but every day, our hair had to be presentable, including, on the sides the hair must not cover the student's ears, behind the head the hair must not fall below the natural growth line, in front the hair must not cover the forehead, and if pulled down, it must not be long enough to go below the eyebrows had to always be combed, brushed or gelled. No uneven shaven hair, basically no punk looks. The story, between me being a total nerd and introvert, sucking at non-cycling sports, being a member of the library lunch club and having applied for and been accepted into the ultra dorky 30 boy school chamber choir, I was completely like a lemniscate shaped peg trying to choose between a square and round holes. I eventually gave up trying to fit in and begun seeking manners to stick it out. I soon became the only student to attend school by bicycle. I bought trench coats, heavy boots, fanny packs and expedition backpacks. I discovered anime and cosplay. And eventually, I believe I was watching the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air or something. Saw a dude with a cylindrical afro and thought, that would fit the rules, wouldn't it? I thus began letting my hair grow on top. It began rather tame, just a noticeable cylindrical shape. But between my hairdressing gain in practice and me never failing the hair length test, plus me spending a good two or three minutes per hour combing it up, until I could hide a standing crayon on the crown of my head. My new regret was the no punk look rule, forcing me to keep something of a cushion on the sides and back. Still, half the school hated me for having and milking my personal loophole, but I was still a total social urchin and bully magnet and was glad to fight back in such blatant fashion. I eventually moved on to high school where there was no uniform at all and nobody was checking hair but I discovered that letting it grow further up was just forcing me to comb so much more and then I turned 18 and had to do my mandatory military service. Thus, I had to actually chop it down and being that I just moved to Cancun, I discovered that my vertical hairdo was as unpleasant as wearing a wool cap in this hellish heat and gave up on it but my memories remain. Man, I love those hairdos. I'm a white guy, so I can't have that sort of hair. But I love those fresh Prince of Bel-Air hairstyles, like the tall flat tops. Ah, oh, man, if I could have one of those, I would definitely have one. I love them. And you can stand stuff up in it as well. Anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in. Love you guys, as always. If you do have a moment, if you can share this or click that like, share buttons, whatever. Love you guys. Take care now. Goodbye.